Jazz a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I knew that sound well, too. It was the beating of the old man's heart. It increased my fury as the beating of a drum stimulates the soldier into courage. But even yet, I refrained and kept still. Fair and stately palace, radiant palace, reared its head. In the monarch, thought's dominion, it stood there. Never seraph spread a pinion over fabric half so fair. Banners yellow, glorious, golden, on its roof did float and flow. Indeed, an excellent jest. We will have many a rich laugh about it at the palazzo <laughs> over our wine. <laughs> the Amontillado, I said. <laughs> yes, the Amontillado. But is it not getting late? Will they not be awaiting us at the Palazzo, the Lady Fortunato, and the rest? Let us be gone. Yes, I said. Let us be gone. For the love of God, Montresor. Yes, I said. For the love of God. Of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door, quoth to Raven, nevermore. And the Raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of velvet. And then for a moment, all is still, and all is silent, save the voice of the clock. The dreams are stiff frozen as they stand, but the echoes of the chime die away. They have endured but an instant, and a light, half-subdued laughter floats after them as they depart. And now again the music swells, and the dreams live and writhe to and fro more merrily than ever, taking hue from the many-tinted window. Radiant hair melted imperceptibly into the vague yet deep shadow which formed the background of the whole. The frame was oval, richly gilded and filigreed and moresque. As a thing of art, nothing could be more admirable than the painting itself. But it could have been neither the execution of the work, nor the immortal beauty of the countenance, which had so suddenly and so vehemently moved me. Least of all, could it have... Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevance bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird of beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word.